Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today and it is then posted to our website in our archives for you to watch later at your convenience. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please share with your friends, family, <coughs> excuse me, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in any of the uh, shows we have on Encompass Live. Um, for those of you not from Nebraska, here at the Nebraska, we, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. So we are similar possibly to your state library. So we provide training and services and resources to all types of libraries in the state. Uh, so you may find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, public, academic, K-12, um, corrections, museums, archives, anything and everything. Uh, really our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. Um, something cool libraries are doing, something we think we could be doing, uh, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Uh, we sometimes have Nebraska Library Commission staff come on the show to do presentations about programs and services and things we're doing here through the commission, but we also bring on guest speakers. And that's what we have today. Um, ah. Today we have uh, Regina and Diana are both um, joining us both from Florida, correct? Yeah. Uh, and uh, they're going to talk about something which a very popular topic. I, I know from the number of people that signed up for today's show, uh, technology skills assessment and training, which is something that we, I know everybody needs and a lot of us struggle with, I'm sure. So um, I will hand it over to both of you to um, fully introduce yourself and tell us what you have for us this morning. Um. Hi, welcome. I'm Diana Silvera from Navarre Library Services and um, I'm here with Regina. Um, Regina's at the Panhandle Library Access Network. Um, a little bit about our organizations before we get started. So Navarre Library Services is a consulting company. It's basically me. Um, I have some other people now and then. But, um, and Regina's with uh, the Panhandle Library Access Network, which we call PLAN, which you'll hear a lot today, the word PLAN. Um, PLAN is a multi-type library cooperative here in Florida. We have our state library, just like you have in Nebraska, but then we have um, five regional organizations that do something similar, very similar, CE, um, group purchases, um, training, um, Regina, I don't know if you want to pipe in and talk about more about what uh, PLAN does a little bit. Well, the uh, five multi-type library cooperatives are uh, established by statute, and uh, we share resources amongst our member libraries. PLAN has 16 counties in the state of Florida. We're in the northwest part of Florida, the Panhandle, and um, the other multi-type library cooperatives are throughout the state. Uh, like Diana said, continuing education, training, uh, cooperative purchasing, um, advocacy for libraries, um, kind of those things in general. So, um, so that this just a little bit of background about ourselves. My um, personally, I, um, I got my degree from University of North Carolina Greensboro a way long time ago that we don't like to use dates anymore and an undergrad in psychology from Catawba College um, in the 90s. So, um, and I relocated from North Carolina back down to my home state, which is Florida. Um, so we both have um, huge library backgrounds and Regina, do you wanna introduce yourself a little bit more? Sure, um, I am the well, I was until a couple of weeks ago, the director of professional development for PLAN. Uh, I've just recently received a promotion to assistant director of the, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, I have an undergraduate degree in history from New Mexico State University and um, a master's in library science from the University of North Texas in Denton, Texas. Um, but I too, like Diana, am back in Florida where I am from. I am also a native Floridian, which um, is not, there's not a lot of us, but uh, more and more. So 
that's a little bit about me. So, so the two of us, um, a little bit about how this came to be, and then um, we're gonna, the agenda for today will be about how this whole thing came to be, what the background of the project is, what we did for the, back, the project itself, um, the findings we found, and how we think this could help you, um, and then technology training resources that you can use at your library. Um, and um, at the end, there is a link and a QR code to the slides and project information, sample surveys, all of that stuff um, for your convenience. So you don't have to try and jot a huge amount of notes down if you don't want to. Um, at the end is also our contact information. So if you had follow up questions, um, you're encouraged to um, contact either of us. That said, I am a very casual presenter and I love questions. So put them in the chat box, the question box, however you want to ask questions during this session. Um, Regina and I, because there's two of us, are able to kind of monitor that. Um, and it's always better to ask your question the moment you have it versus trying to wait until some um, arbitrary point later in the presentation when you can't remember what you were going to ask. So feel free to ask your question when you have it in your mind. And as soon as we can, we will get to it. So a little bit about this project. This is an ARPA grant um, during COVID, as you know, um, ARPA grants um, were created to help bridge this huge digital divide that um, became very evident very quickly with COVID. Um, and this grant focused on three main parts. And we're really only gonna focus on one today, but it had, multi it had multiple um, focuses. Um, and these were all targeting very rural libraries, which we're going to talk about in, the, in a minute. In a minute, I can't speak today, and I really apologize for that. Um, so the first was to help some libraries get websites. They had really um, older websites that were um, built with like a website builder back, probably when websites first came to be, and the libraries had a really hard time getting new content put up there. So we um, worked with Five Little Libraries to create. Um, for the libraries and one, one project to create um, new WordPress um, websites that they can easily update, manage, and kind of take control over so that they're able to um, present information to their users. And um, so we worked really hard with all of those libraries. The second part was technology planning. And then this included some actual grants from Regina's organization for new emergency technology. So um, we, Regina and I traveled um, the panhandle looking at every wire at every library, talking about what their technology planning goals are and their technology immediate needs. Um, Regina's organization, I'm gonna let her say it because I'm gonna forget a couple, but um, do you wanna go ahead and say what the, some of the technology we were able to fund was? Uh, sure, uh, so probably the, the largest purchase is we actually uh, bought a server for um, the, one of the small and rural libraries in our um, membership. Um, and it was really a great thing that they did. It was at end of life. It was probably a little past end of life, let's let's be honest. And That's very um, it was common. great yes, that in our small passed. rural libraries, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> and it was really good that we did this because I think about three months after uh, this new server was installed, um, the old server just went kaput. So they would have, it would have been a mess. But so thankfully uh, we were able to stave that off. We also purchased, uh, remember this was during the pandemic, we purchased a lot of uh, Chromebooks and mm -hmm. uh, Wi-Fi hotspots for one library that they were able to loan them out so that uh, people would have uh, internet access at home um, because the library was, um, had limited hours that they could get to the library. We also bought, um, let's see, Wi-Fi hotspots, Google Chromebooks. Uh, we bought uh, barcode scanners for some libraries because they were they were out of service. We had uh, some large print keyboards um, for visually impaired patrons. Um, just a, a lot of things like that. We also were able to even get some a few cricket machines for programming so that when people were able to come back into the library that uh, we were able to provide some some programming materials so that's basically what we we spent quite a bit of money on for this equipment but it was all very very useful and these libraries would not 
has been able to purchase any of this without this ARPA funding. So uh, we so um, and then the third prong, of course, was the technology training, which is why all of you are here to learn about this. So we're gonna delve a little bit more into that a little bit more. So we um, focused the whole third part, and what the rest of the session today is gonna be about is uh, this technology training. So we focused in on six counties, and some of you might be familiar with the Panhandle in Florida. And often, when you think of the Panhandle of Florida, you think of Panama City Beach and all of these giant mansions on the water. But if you explore the Panhandle a little bit, as soon as you get off the beach, you go very rural, very fast. Um, Gina's area, what, I think we said like a thousand, it's like hundreds of miles. Um, and some of these counties are huge and they're very um, sparsely populated. Um, even the counties like Walton County where you see that 80,000, there's a lot of people at the beach, but Walton County actually goes, is very narrow and north and south. And as soon as um, you get to that upper part of the county, out of that initial beach area, as you go up, it gets more and more rural. In fact, that was the library system that Regina and I actually had to go on a dirt road um, to get to the library. We were actually um, off-roading and they didn't actually have really good central air even there. So um, you, these counties um, are really rural. They're identified in Florida. We have something called um, The name escapes me, but we identify them Ready. as rural. Ready, thank Ready you. Ready County's Rural Economic <laughs> Development Initiative. So, uh, great out of yes. my hat. I was, it's a four-letter <laughs> word. I, I apologize to everybody. I'm not normally this scatty. Um, so these Ready Counties are identified as having um, really rural. They're very economically depressed. They have um, technology challenges. So a little bit about these areas. Um, 83% only have a high school diploma. 16% have a college degree, 19% live in poverty, only 87% of households have a computer, and only 78% have access to broadband um, internet. So um, it, this is an extremely um, area that is really hit by the digital divide. Um, I talked to some staff members that said, um, yeah, we have eBooks, it's great, but the patrons have to get in their car and drive to the library, hook up to our Wi-Fi, download their book, and then go home. And um, <laughs> So, you know, there's the library might be the only place in some of these communities where people can connect to the internet. So public Wi-Fi is so important at these libraries. And they these counties all did get other money from other places, ARPA money in their county systems to start getting a little more broadband access. Um, so it's coming, but it's not an immediate fix. So um, there uh, that is still a huge issue at some of these libraries. Um, so what we found is the patrons, of course, need technology help a lot. There's a lot of needs. There's a lot of people that don't need, you know, they come into the library, as maybe in your libraries, that's the first time they're using technology, and they need help from the staff. So um, this is one of the quotes from one of the directors, and I'm going to expand on this in a second. But simple issues like a disconnected cord, she, um, she was saying, like, it one of the smaller branches there only maybe have one staff member at some of these more rural libraries and they'll call and say the computers aren't working and they'll put an out of order sign on it and it could take her a couple days because she's the library director she's the only person there that has they don't have a tech person they don't have all of these other resources to drive out you know 45 minutes an hour to this location look at it and fix it and it could be something as simple as a disconnected cord when she gets there and that so patrons didn't have access to the to computers to public access computers for 24 48 hours and that's a significant need you know the other part of this too is just the patron experience um you know so you might have a mother like mine i love my mother very much she's you know in her late 70s she lives off of libby that's how she's she can't see that well so she can't read she doesn't want to read books she wants to read on her ipad so she can make it really big and nobody will judge her for it but um she you know she's not the most techie person so if she walks into her library and says i'm having trouble with libby everybody there needs to know how to help they can't say well you need to come back on another day when somebody's here to help so how do we get everybody at the library to have these core competencies that technology for staff is not a barrier to helping our users? And that's really where this project came from, is how do we help everybody get connected? So what we wanted to do first is identify the issues. 
Um, we didn't want to come in and say, we know that you don't know how to do this because we don't know. We don't know where the sort of the weak spots are in people's knowledge. So we created, based on the Digital Learn PLA survey from a couple of years ago, we took that and modified it. And um, we had two sections. The first um, 10 questions were actually defining terms. You know, what is um, an app? What is a browser? And it had multiple choice answers they had to answer. Self-assessment um, was the rest of it. And this is a sample question, connecting to a wireless network. I don't think I can do that. I probably could manage that. Um, I could do it okay. Um, I'm confident enough to show and tell others. And really what we were looking for is this last answer, that they were so confident in this skill that they can they could do it. Um, fair, okay, that's all right. You can do it and you probably can muster your way through a patron transaction, but we really wanted people to be confident enough. So this was a large quiz um, a survey. We um, All of the participating libraries had made a commitment to Regina that their staff would have time to do all of this, because that is a huge issue. If you think about um, all of us, we don't have enough time in any day. So having that time to do this pretest, the self-evaluation, and then um, and, and really think through their skills, and then also designate the time to have for training and learning these skills um, that we've identified. So we went through what we considered the core sort of technologies. You don't notice there's not a, there's no high end stuff. There's not, do you know how to code? Can you program a robot? Um, that kind of stuff. We kind of tried to see, but very core and what was at those libraries at the moment. Um, so general vocabulary, do you understand, you know, main, the main tech, technical terms that people would use. Computer basics, can you turn computers on, plug things in? Um, sort of that basic, um, you know, open up an internet browser. Can you do sort of those basic things? Um, can you manage an operating system? Do you understand what operating systems are? Some basic word processing, spreadsheets, presenting software. Are you able to, you know, manipulate columns? Are you able to change fonts? Um, all of those basic things if you're helping people do resumes, if you're running reports, um, if you have to do patron training, presenting software. Are they able to use the internet and web browsers? This also included um, being able to determine what fake news, um, sort of that sort of stuff in there, um, and surf the internet safely. Email, can they, can they manage their own email and help people set up email? Um, a little bit about devices. As you know, working in a library, people bring in all sorts of devices for us. So are you familiar enough with these devices that you could talk about them a little bit? And then library databases, what we focused in on the databases that all of these libraries had access to. So there, these are things that they would need to be able to answer questions on and help their users and um, including their library catalogs. And then if they're able to manage social media, because at these libraries, they, there's not a marketing person doing their social media. The library themselves is a social media person. So in each section had about 10 questions. So it wasn't like very nitty and gritty. There, each of these sections was an overview, but it's still a huge, it took about 30 minutes for each person to commit on average, go through this whole exam. So it was a commitment to sit down and do that. So the average score, was 64%. That's what we found. Um, so, and even when you're looking at those skills and you go, oh, those are really basic, 64% is not good. So, we really had to kind of pull back and look at what, okay, how are we going to train all of these people? So, if, if anybody familiar with the panhandle, the panhandle is very large. It is very long and narrow. So, from one library that's participating to the far one on the west from the east, we're talking about a couple hundred miles. So it's very hard to set up in-person training for that because people have to travel hours. There's actually a time zone change in there too, just to keep, kind of keep everybody on their toes. Um, Regina's in central time, but some of her libraries are in eastern time. So she's got um, that challenge as well. So, um, we decided that self-paced training was going to be the um, sort of way to go with this. And we also just looked at all of the stuff that came in and we looked at anything that 55% of people could not say they were confident enough. Those were the skills that we focused on as the most need. And um, we used Niche Academy, which um, if you're not familiar with Niche Academy, it's a self-paced learning platform. Um, a lot of like 
states and organizations like Regina's already had this where they put their training in there and it's um, viewable only to their members and their um, the nice thing with it is the the content is in there um, Regina gets really nice reports that she can see who's gone through it how many people have completed it so it's it's a little more robust um, on that end and um, so it helped us kind of focus in on how we were going to do this so I'm not going to read through this whole list we're just going to spend a little bit of time on this these are some of the skills that we decided that um, we had to kind of pull together so we did have things like 3d printers because a lot of the libraries did have some maker spaces in there we found Gale databases which is our Florida our, Flor our state library provides uh, Gale databases to all Florida libraries so this is a core resource everybody has access to and um, it's really important running reports in their ILS systems um, fake news troubleshooting computers social media um, lots of stuff with browsers that they didn't know how to do um, evaluating websites for reliability and accuracy um, identifying um, preventing and removing fake pop-ups and malware so all sorts of um, lots of core things that we're dealing with some some stuff a little more of that um, sort of advanced stuff like Roku's and Amazon Fire Sticks and other streaming media and everything why do you need to know that but if your library has access to Canopy or Hoopla, um, your patrons can put that on their devices. So they're going to ask you about it. Um, Kindles, of course, how to connect the laptop to a projector, um, being able to sort columns. So lots of stuff like that. Um, you can kind of go through here, some Microsoft. So and even identifying some common social media networks. So it was all over there. So what we did was we went through Niche. And one of the nice things about Niche Academy is there are free trainings available. Some libraries will create training and they'll put it up there and they'll make it free and available to other libraries. And other organizations will do this as well. Um, Niche creates its own content as well. And then you can upload your own. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. So Regina and I went to the marketplace there first. And we looked through all of the free training, all of the training, even the paid training. And we kind of looked through. And we found some training that would be exactly what we need, like basics of Excel, um, how to use Gale databases. So we found some of this training already existed. So we created a special section within um, Regina's um, Niche Academy and put this training in there. Um, and then we found what we didn't have training on and we created short sessions and they were very targeted. They were, um, some of them were, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes. Some of them were 30 minutes, depending on the content. And they were very much, we had a whole training that we developed on how to use plugs, um, you know, and how to evaluate news and very focused in on where we saw those knowledge gaps because people don't have time to maybe watch a whole thing they don't have time to sort of delve in we just needed to give them the facts that they needed to know and the knit and gritty of that training so here's a little bit more of what we created in-house so troubleshooting 101 just focused on pcs because that's what most of them have in their libraries um, how do you fix a slow computer? What are sort of the steps that you would go through when you're trying to do that? Um, and, and, and while we're doing that, let's talk about the vocabulary of that computer. Tools that you might use, like shortening URLs, cloud storage, and devices, web browsers, practical tech, um, and social media. So um, we created training for all of these things. And first and most important, we created a training called How to Use Niche Academy. Because one of the things we realized is not everybody is familiar with Niche Academy. And we didn't want the, the format to be the barrier. It isn't really hard. You have to create an account. Um, if with the way it's set up, if you have a library um, email address, um, the domain name of the email is previously approved by Regina so you just go right in if it's not it goes to a moderation and Regina has to approve or um, deny access to it so we focused in on this training we put it all together into a little pocket in in niche Academy and then we gave them two months and I say that we gave them two months but all of that training is still available so if somebody came now and they wanted to do this they, they can, they're more than welcome to take the training they're just not part of this study the two months we you know because it's an ARPA grant and we had to have an end date so we could 
um, turn in all of our reports. So we had two months to complete the training. Um, as an incentive, we give a prize to the person who completed the most tutorials. And trying to make it a little gamification in there, um, it got highly competitive. <laughs> I will say we had um, directors calling and saying, how many has so-and-so watched? Are they the top one? They want to know. Um, so it, it was um, it, it was really fun. Um, we did have a couple people tie at the time, and then we had to randomly pick one person to be the winner. But um, I do think that that little incentive um, helped a lot. And um, during that whole time, of course, we were available for questions, anything like that. We were constantly getting feedback. And then when we finished, we did a post survey. We sent out the same exact survey again and asked everybody to, um, to take it again. Um, so we did hit a couple stumbling bots. And this is part of the problem with being um, an, uh, an organization like Regina's where you're not, it's not, you're not the people's direct supervisor. We had some people that took the pre and not the post. We had some people who took the post and not the pre. Um, we didn't have the authority to force people to do anything. So, you know, if they decided they didn't want to do it, um, it was up to their supervisor to kind of move them through it, not um, myself and Regina. Um, and of course, time is a huge issue. Um, you know, staff, especially when you're the only man at the library, you have to do it during downtime. And so some staff had a challenge of getting the tutorials um, completed in time. However, overall, we had a 10% increase in knowledge. So still not perfect. Nobody, everybody's not perfect in the world, um, but we did have that 10%. So we did see a good bump in the training and we had 6,875 tutorials access in two months which is a huge number. Um, they were really watching these tutorials and um, in niche you can see watch versus access. So this was people who accessed them and we could see that they watched them as well. So we're really happy with the results, but the results are not the end for Regina and myself. We have been working really hard at continuing what we learned because what this gave us was an understanding of what the training true needs truly are in our region. <clears throat> Not just what we think the training needs are or what people identify, but what they actually need. So we, <clears throat> excuse me, Regina has been um, using this as a curriculum guide for creating additional training. Um, she um, continually offers continuing education to all of her members um, not just through this ARPA grant, but a huge portion of what they do at the plan organization. So as she's developing training, she looks back at this, and I'm just speaking for Regina now, and creates um, and adds stuff that will hit these needs. There's also a tech, a plan tech day conference, and this was in March, and this is usually, um, it's where we bring all the toys, you know, all of the robots and printers and crickets and um, VR and all of that is there. And we, um, what we did this year a little bit different is we created a high tech and a low tech track. So we had um, Brian Pickman came and he was doing, you know, AI and all of these really high level kind of courses. And then at the same time, concurrently, um, I was presenting on sort of these more basic skills we talked about. We had a cybersecurity session, um, you know, and we kind of focused in a little bit more on that. And then what the technology, we also had some of the lower end technologies there. And um, so people could explore those as well. Um, she's continually adding niche content. Um, again, that fits this need and beyond that, but also make sure that she hits some of these basic skills and web-based training um, as well. One of the things that for me, it was a takeaway, I, I've done technology training and work with libraries for technology with technology for the last 20 years. And one of the things I've, training has always sort of been focused on what's the next and biggest, greatest thing. Like everybody wants AI training right now, everybody, you know, and this grant really for me was a, a moment to pause and really shift my paradigm a little bit and say, that's all well and good and we need to we don't need to not do that um i think it's really important to stay on that cutting edge and do emerging trends but we can't leave people behind we need to make sure that our training fits that whole scale and that we're going back and making sure that we're bringing along the people that um are maybe te technology reluctant um especially now um you know and it's 
not everybody coming to libraries has a huge background um, in technology and you know it's it is such a it's a key part of what we do um, everybody who staffs the desk um, needs to have some confidence in all of these technology skills so that they can um, especially in our rural libraries like you all are dealing with in here in Nebraska too we have people who they've never went to library school they're yeah. you know they're running the library you know it's half of their job and the other half is running the post office in the town um i mean it's it, and they're just barely keeping up with the basics of running a library and then this all becomes something it's absolutely something they need a lot more <laughs> Yeah, well, that's it. And we, you know, and sometimes we just get like caught up in what's the newest. And I love the newest, so I'm never, I'm not saying anything negative about the newest. But it's important to make sure we have the time and the focus to make sure those core skills are there. And people don't have a huge library background. Even some people that have gone through library school might not have this huge core background. Tech is not their thing. You know, they want to, um, um, not, but they have to have it no matter what. So does anybody have any questions before we get into sort of the resource part of this session? Um, yeah, I don't see anything right now. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, go ahead and type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. I'm monitoring that here and I can see those questions and um, read them off to our presenters today. Um, and yeah, anything you want to ask about, anything you want to share, um, if you've done something like this in your library or your library system, I'm sure we'd love to hear about that too. Um, and I'd like to hear if you haven't done it formally, are there skills that you when you look around and go, yes, that's the kind of stuff we need help with? Just to, um, just kind of as a curiosity. Yeah. Well, I don't see anything right now, but I'll keep an eye on things. And as soon as anything pops up, so I will I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna pass it on to Regina and let her talk about free technology training resources that are available to all of us that are on, um, listening or live or on demand. And then um, again, at the end, we'll have a little discussion. So think up some questions um, as Regina's talking. Great, uh, well, thanks, Diana. Um, I'll just have you for, uh, advance the slides if you would. Um, yeah. Okay, so next. <laughs> so, what we talked about uh, earlier, the plan is one of the five multi-type library cooperatives in Florida. Here's a nice pretty map of all of us. Um, I, you may have something similar in your state, uh, a organization, a nonprofit organization that provides continuing education. We do not charge uh, Florida library staff for any of our continuing education programs because uh, they are all grant funded. So. Um, we are open to everyone in the state, even if you're not a plan member, as long as you're in the state of Florida, then you're good to go. Next. And also, um, in our state, we have the Division of Library and Information Services. That is a division of the Florida Department of State. They provide a lot of resources for librarians um, and library staff. Uh, free, of course, and then they also subscribe to Tech Talk uh, on behalf of us. Uh, it's available again to all Florida Library staff. It's a great newsletter if you're not familiar with it. It's a weekly newsletter that's sent out with just a, you know, one short uh, tip on technology. So, you know, today's newsletter may be talking about PowerPoint presentations, how to do certain things in PowerPoint. And they also, um, if they talk about PowerPoint, they also talk about Google Slides. So whichever one you're using, uh, they, they cover it. Um, and that is a great resource. They also provide um, webinars, a couple webinars every month that's also free for library staff to attend. So they get a lot of free training from Tech Talk. Next. And then we also have statewide programs such as Nebraska does. There's Nebraska Library Commission. They have this webinars and, and everything else. We have that in Florida and you might have something similar in your state too. Next. And I always recommend if someone needs some free technology training as to go to the source. Um, I am really bad about this. I always forget. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> that there is free training on these programs that we have spent a lot of money and because these organizations they want you to use their product so that you know when it's obsolete you have to um, upgrade it um, and give them more money but they really want you to use it so they have a lot of good training available for you and it's all free of course and um, just take advantage of this free training that's provided by these companies. Uh, TechSmith, um, that is a, they have Camtasia and Snagit and a few other uh, programs, very reasonable programs if you purchase them, but their tutorials are excellent. I mean, um, if, you're, if you're looking into any video creation, then I recommend this. It's, it's very reasonably priced. And the video training doesn't even doesn't just talk about how to use the product, but they talk about best best practices for mm. videos, for training videos and such. So um, I really like TechSmith. Uh, next, please. Next. Oh, okay. And then uh, look at things you already own for your technology training. So, like Diana said. Um, plan subscribes to uh, Niche Academy. Uh, I think all of our five MLCs in the state now provide Niche Academy to their members. Uh, Tech Talk, the newsletter, again, that's paid for by our uh, state library. LinkedIn Learning, if you've already paying for it for your patrons, you can use it for staff too. Universal Class, uh, this is uh, one of the cooperative purchases that PLAN has for our members. Uh, patrons use it, but it's also great for classes for staff. They have tons and tons of classes you can take. Um, one of our multi-type library cooperatives has created a, an expertise database where hmm. you can contact um, other, other library staff around um, the Nephlin area, which is the Northeast Florida area, um, on technology or anything else. Maybe you, you know, you have a question about Excel and you know that, uh, you know, John at Jacksonville Public Library is an Excel expert, you know, reach out to him. And Gale Courses is another uh, resource that you may subscribe to. And these are all great. So take advantage of things you already own. Next, uh, tech soup courses. Um, some tech soup courses are paid, but they also provide free courses every now and then. So if you uh, subscribe to the email for tech soup courses, they'll let you know when anything free is coming up. And I did want to make a note um, about tech soup. If you do not use tech soup to buy technology for your library, I encourage you to get an account and do so. Um, it's free. The, the account is free. Mm -hmm. um, you can get a lot of reduced prices for software, hardware, mm -hmm. Wi-Fi hotspots, things like that. Uh, recently, uh, our IT guy found out that uh, we were able to get Microsoft 365 for free. For our organization, they they gave us ten free licenses for Microsoft 365, wow, which is huge. nothing. Is, yes, it is very huge. Mm -hmm. um, you you know you do have to set up an account. You have to approve mm -hmm. your. You either have to be a library that's listed on the IMLS um, list of public libraries, mm -hmm. or a nonprofit organization um, mm -hmm. in order to join. But um, it is a great great resource to purchase um yeah we, we recommend that software. here as well we when we um last year with the arpa grants that we gave out to libraries and i think even the year before with cares act we did sub grants to our libraries um many of them did need to upgrade software and hardware and whatnot and um we recommended every single time go to TechSoup. you will get more more bang for your buck definitely uh, you know you wanted to yes. probably could get four you know, or um, <laughs> right. more than what you um, thought if you just went direct to the, you know, your local computer store or Dell or Best Buy or something. Yeah. Yeah. I We just received um, Adobe Express for free, and that gave us a, a few other Creative Cloud 
things too. We're going to purchase Creative Cloud this year, and uh, I, I think it's like a 50% price reduction over what you would pay on the if you went directly to Adobe. So um, now TechSoup does normally charge a, an admin fee, but it's usually very nominal, and that's just to keep the site going, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a comment from someone in the audience who said text soup can save you a lot of money. Yes. yes. <laughs> Next slide, please. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, you may have heard of this uh, GCF Global. Uh, it used to be the Goodwill um, website where they provided a lot of free training that is still going. Now it's a, a They've just rebranded it, basically. I have found that some of the training is out of date, so maybe they're still offering Word 2010, but um, they're, they seem to be updating it pretty well, so uh, you, can, you can find um, something more recent, too, for that. Next, please. And digitallearn.org, this is put out by the Public Library Association. Um, some of the courses are free, some are not. And uh, this is, like Diana said, this is where we, we got the technology skills assessment um, template and then modified it for our region. Next, please. And then Code, Ac Code Academy, um, this is for coding, so uh, it's more for the higher level, but, um, you know, so even just the Learn SQL class, if you use Koha or something similar to that, um, then SQL is something that you need in order to run reports. Um, well, you don't need it, but it, it can provide more customized reports uh, for you. So, um, and just your basic HTML, even if you have WordPress, which is very, um, user friendly. Sometimes I know I like to get into the HTML and do a little tweaks um, that I can't do with the WordPress um, access that they provide to for their builders. Um, so that's a, another free source. Uh, next, please. And then Senior Planet from AARP. Uh, you, you don't have to be old. Um, <laughs> to use these, these are free classes. They have uh, they have live classes. They have on demand classes. Uh, they have a lot of things, um, and uh, the, it's a it's just a great resource for everybody. Next, please. And then, if you TED Talks are great for more not necessarily training on specific technology, but more of the kind of the high level. Um, technology issues, technology trends, um, such as chat, GPT, and things like that. So um, if you kind of want to learn about a technology, not necessarily how to do a technology, then I recommend searching through uh, TED Talks. Next. And then there's virtual conferences. Um, for instance, in Florida, the uh, Florida Libraries Online Conference. Um, is put on by the five multi-type library cooperatives. We cooperate with, with each other uh, for this conference. It, uh, it's actually tomorrow. Um, again, we, we offer that uh, conference uh, free to, um, well, Florida library staff, but uh, if there are spaces available, y'all can y'all are welcome to come too. I don't think we have any specific technology training in this year's conference. It's about um, the, libraries have heart so it's um more of the community engagement inclusivity um topics mm -hmm. such as that um big talk from small libraries which i'm sure everyone's aware of um, that put on by the nebraska library association is another mm -hmm. conference and uh library 2.0 that is um, out of san jose state university they offer some free trainings and they also offer i think at least two virtual conferences a year um but yeah you, you I, can follow, just I get their news their, their mailings too yeah they do some sort of like yeah mini i think they call them mini conferences or mini events or something yeah 
Yes, yes, and those and those are free. So um, check those out too. Yeah, and Big Talk. Uh, that's week? that's the conference that we do here through the Library Commission that I host. Yeah, and that's yes. what you all submitted for that. Um, and it's it's every every for everyone who's aware. It's every, the last Friday of the last Friday of February every year. Um, okay. Free online for everyone, um, but we always get more proposals than we can fit <laughs> into the one day. <laughs> and so, luckily, I have this show, my weekly show, I can put things into. And we do have a mixture of things too. The weight technology things in there, and we've got the full history um, archive of the whole conference going back to the previous year. So, um, if you're looking for something particular, look into there um, that page too to find previous recordings for whatever topic you might be looking for. Great. All right. Next, please. Um, Khan Academy. Uh, this is again coding, but um, uh, they also have some more basic things such as like the internet, online data security, um, just general computers. So there are some more high level classes, but some some lower classes, level classes too. I highly recommend uh, the Hour of Code one there. The Hour of Code is great for someone who's like, I know nothing and I don't even know how to even get started. And it's just so much. It is literally just do it in small chunks. So yeah. don't be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> um, next, please. Um, Amazon actually has uh, cybersecurity awareness training and uh, training on how to be an internet bodyguard. So I think we're, we, um, we're all afraid of staff who click on phishing links and everything and, and which could allow uh, hackers into our systems and that would be devastating. So we want to make sure all staff are aware of, you know, how people are trying to get your information and trying to get access to your technology so that they can do bad, bad things. Um, so th that's free training that's available too. Um, next, please. And then also for cyber cybersecurity, there's the National Cybersecurity Alliance. That's a federal government uh, program. Uh, they have uh, training, they have toolkits available. Um, and you can also, I think they have a class where you can learn how to train others on cybersecurity. So that's something that you could learn yourself and then also share with your patrons. And in Florida here, we have uh, Cyber Florida, which is the Florida Center for Cybersecurity. Uh, mm -hmm. They've provided us with uh, webinars for our members and they, they've not charged and uh, it's, it's great. They, they partner with the uh, University of West Florida and Pensacola and it's it's just a great program and we're able to take advantage of that here you may have something similar in your state too and next and then other ideas for free training um you know talk to your local government agencies if you have um, an it department in your uh, city or county maybe there's someone there that could do some training if you work for an academic library other academic departments may be able to to provide you with some free technology training uh, look in your own library. You have books in your collection, um, not just uh, your print books, but also uh, Libby or, or your ebook collection, magazines in your collection. Of course, there's, you know, PC Magazine and Macworld, um, all kinds of things like that that also provide technology um, information. You may have other staff members in your library or library system who they do know something about um, a specific technology and would be willing to, to share that with, with other staff members. And then there are tons of YouTube channels on how to do this, how to do that. Um, Excel seems to be hugely popular. I didn't list them all because there are so many, but if you just go to YouTube and search for videos for training on something, you will find more than you could watch. <laughs> uh, next. Um, so these are some of the, the books and magazines that I found in our Libby, um, Cloud Security, Office 365, the iPad user manual. Next, please. Next. And that's all that we have. Um, this is our contact information. Um, as you see here, uh, Diana is going to be at ALA. So if anyone's going to ALA, please visit her at her booth 2042. And uh, here's a QR code and the resources and slides. There's a link. Um, you'll be able to get these slides and all the list of all the resources and, and then some uh, that we covered. 
so, and if anyone has any questions for me or and for Diana, then uh, just please let us know. And we thank you for your time and attention today. Yeah, awesome. Um, yes, anybody, if you have any questions, we still have some time, um, definitely. Um, in our official hour, I'm just getting that link for myself too, to training hyphen Nebraska. Let's see here. Um, what did I do? Whoops. I gotta spell things correctly if I wanna get to them, don't I? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and since I know Diana won't, I will uh, plug Diana's book that she has. It's um, technology planning and and more. No. That's the name of our grant. Technology <laughs> planning. Diana, I'm sorry. That's right. Technology planning for today and tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yes. And um, the grant that we did, did uh, the libraries created technology plans. They also, um, so that is covered in the book. The technology assessments, it's covered in the book. Um, all kinds of stuff. It's a, it's a great book. Um, and uh, you can uh, contact her directly to purchase, um, or of course it's on Amazon for, for everyone too. I, I we, hope that this inspired everybody a little bit in general, like uh, to get a little more, look at your stuff, look at yourself and figure out all, uh, what's missing in your training and how to get it. Absolutely, I think without, so, I would hope so. Yeah. Any, <laughs> um, yeah, I actually learned, I mean, some of the training uh, resources you listed I knew about, but some I did, I wasn't, didn't really, th hadn't really thought about myself. So, um, I, you know, I'm always, we're always trying to find new things to send to libraries of where to go to get their training. And I, I think, um, I forget one of you made the comment that we provide a lot of these things for our patrons because we know they need to learn about it. But we can use them too. There's not like here's just the stuff that only library staff can use, and this is the one the the trainings for the um, patrons. No, use the same everything that you've paid for for your patrons for yourself as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um. Uh, yeah. So, does anybody have any questions, comments, thoughts, anything that you want to know more about, um, dig into more, or anything you wanted to share? Uh, about training um, successes, failures, tips, whatever at your library. I'm gonna see if I can get this, yeah. I was just checking, doing the QR code on my phone. You can bring that up very easy, there it is, yeah. So, um, go ahead and type in the questions section. Uh, we do have some thank yous, thank you for the resources. Um, definitely wanna look at more of these. Um, and like I said, this is something that is with, it's, you know, Big Talk and Small Libraries is where this all came from. And that's what I was talking about earlier. The people that just don't, they don't have the time to figure this all out themselves. And this is, you know, this I think is a great resource for um, the library staff there. So I hope, you know, I'm going to share this out to our Big Talk website as well when we get the recording up saying, hey, <laughs> all you small rural <laughs> libraries, this is, this is the thing you could definitely I'll get some great tips and ideas and, and when I, and I'm glad you did this this grant and the do the you know the actual research on it too. I mean we know off the top of our heads uh, we think we know what people need and what they want and uh, what our library staff is looking for. But I think it's very important to have that official scientific background or you know results that if they do need to say I need to attend these classes or I need we need to pay for this service or whatever and here's the data. That someone else has done the research to show this is what you know people need those library staff um yeah. are struggling with yeah that, that i think that help will help yes. some people to you know back up their you know quests for these kind of things for their own lifelong learning and professional development all right i don't see other questions coming in well i just let's thank you thank you very informative Thanks for all the helpful resources. Yeah, I think you definitely did good <laughs> in getting this out there. I'm glad, glad I was able to help you get this out. So are you presenting this at ALA or are you just um, doing the booth there? I am actually just doing a booth. This is one of my first times doing a booth at ALA. So I'm, it's, I'm very excited. So I will um, I will be there talking about training. So um, mm -hmm. if anybody wants to stop by, I promise to have lots of chocolate for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's the key, absolutely. Um,
All right. So I think if we don't have any other questions, I will. I'm going to pull presenter control back to my page and do a little wrap up here of our show. Um, you all can just stay on the line here. Let me get my screen up. There we go. So this is the page that comes up when you do use that um, that Bitly link, that shortened link um, that you'll get to that has all the information about their project and the slides that um, you all just used today. Uh, right here, a quickie list of the training opportunities, which I think is I mean, a great resource. Uh, so um, I will also add a link to this when I put up the archive page for today's show. There we go. Popped over there finally. Um, I, I should apologize. I just realized all of my stuff for ALA is actually behind me, which is why I look like I'm a hoarder over sort of my shoulder. <laughs> it looks fine. No. <laughs> I put the boxes back there. <laughs> Get ready for the trip. Absolutely. You need to. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, we'll have a link to this. So um, thank you, um, everyone, for being here today with us. Uh, thank you, Diana and Regina. This is a great session. Like I said, awesome resources. I will definitely be digging more into this uh, from my own knowledge and also just for sharing out to our libraries that reach out to us for resources, too. So um, here's the session page for today's show. I'm going to go to our main Encompass Live page to show you, um, um, if you use whatever your search engine of choice is and you type in Encompass Live, the name of our show, we are the only thing called that on the internet so far. Nobody else is allowed to use that name. We haven't trademarked it or copyrighted it or anything, but <laughs> so far no one else is using it. So you'll find us, you'll find our main page. Um, when we're here, you, we see if our upcoming shows for the next couple of months already scheduled. And here's the link to our archive. So this is where today's recording will go. Most recent ones go to the top of the page. And there'll be a link to, like I said, the recording to this show on our uh, YouTube channel. And then I will have a link out to this page with all the slides and the resources from the project um, and the training um, resources that you can get to. Everyone who registered for today's show and attended today's show will get an email from me letting you know when the recording is ready. Um, it should be done by the end of the day tomorrow at the latest, as long as GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me. Uh, while I'm here, I'll show you there is a search feature here uh, where you can see if we've done a topic on anything that you might be interested in. You can search our sh full show archives or the, just the most recent 12 months if you just want something very current. Um, and that is because this is our full show archives. And I'm not going to scroll all the way down, but you can see the little scroll bar over here. It's, it's pretty, there's a long list here. This goes back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was in January 2009. So we're in our 15th year here, and we have all of our show recordings here. <laughs> um, so just pay attention when you're watching something to the original broadcast date. They all have the date when they first were broadcast. Um, so resources and services, some things may still stand the test of time and be great um, things to watch, but some things may become old, outdated. Um, services may no longer exist anymore. Links may be broken. Uh, people might not work at the same library they worked at when they you know, presented for us 10 years ago or whatever. Um, so just pay attention to that. But uh, this is something that libraries do. We keep things for historical purposes. And as long as we have a place to host them, which right now is our Library Commission YouTube channel, we will keep all of our show archives on here. Um, and I was actually just looking up, because you mentioned Senior Planet. We actually did, I searched for Planet. Um, we did a session on NASA. But um, Free Tech Programs to Older Nebraskans, we actually did a show last year on Senior Planet. We had our um, Oh. people from our senior planet working with Nebraska specifically um, to come do a presentation about that that one service. So uh, you'll never know what you'll find on our show archives. <laughs> Excellent. That's really cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, we do also have a Facebook page. You see, I've got links here and from our session pages. So if you'd like to use Facebook, uh, give us a like over there. Here we have a reminder about logging into today's show. Um, we do a little uh, introduction to our speakers. Um, and when the recordings are available, here's the one that I did, just did yesterday, the recording for last week's show got posted. So if you do like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. We also use the hashtag EncompLive, a little abbreviation of our name to post onto Twitter and uh, Instagram. So you can follow us there as well. So that wraps it up for today. Uh, next week, I'll be talking something very Nebraska-specific topic, Nebraska Public Library Laws. 
Um, chapter 51 is the main section of Nebraska state statutes that were, were, um, applies to public libraries. And we're gonna be talking about that and other um, related um, state statutes that may affect libraries. Um, this said very Nebraska specific. So if you're concerned about that or wondering about Nebraska public library laws, sign up for next week's show. Um, we also are doing a kind of, I can't think of it as a companion because it's also state statute in July on the Nebraska Open Meetings Act. Uh, so another, we're specifically for Nebraska libraries. Scott Childers, who's part of our, you were talking about regional systems. We do have regional library systems in Nebraska. <laughs> we have four. Um, and our Southeast Library System Director, Scott, he's great at these kind of things, open meetings and library laws. So he's gonna be on with me to talk about those. So please do join us for that or any of our other upcoming shows we have. Uh, we have some good topics coming up. I'm looking at um, your E-rate C uh, one. I'm, that's mm -hmm. that's a, a great topic. Yeah, um, I actually do. This is actually, um, we have a new person on staff, um, Andrew Sherman, Sherm, he goes by. Uh, he's a new on our computer services team and he's doing a couple of sessions on computer things. And this is one that we, I handle the E-rate training for libraries in Nebraska too. And um, he and our other IT people help out me out with the more techie side of it. I, I said, you know, I, I like you were talking about some people do know all the tech and some don't. I know enough, enough. <laughs> um, but when a library wants to know, well, what do I really need to buy? What piece of equipment? That's like beyond me. I know how to get them to discount on E-rate, but I refer them to people like Sherm and our other computer team people who say, here's the router you should get. Here's the whatever. <laughs> and so he's coming on to talk about that. That's great. That's like a very overwhelming topic, especially for um, new directors. And they just, mm -hmm. oh my gosh. And it's so great when you can, you actually go through the steps. Yeah. Um, and he's also doing at the end of this month, securing about securing your computers for public use. So he's doing two different ones that he wanted to come on. Um, at the end of the month, um, our last Wednesday of the month is always a pretty sweet tech session where we have a technology innovation librarian, Amanda Sweet, who comes on and does presentations and all sorts of things. You'll notice your pretty sweet tech, pretty sweet tech. I get it now. You see them all in our archives. So if you're into something tech, you all in tech stuff, I go look at some of her shows. She does all sorts of things. <laughs> um, anything techie related is is her purview. Um, but Sherm, also being our IT person, is coming on to do a couple of sessions. Um, but yeah, you can see we have a mixture of things that we do on the show. You know, we've got our one book for one Nebraska kids and teens program coming up, and then we've got a guest presenter from our Bay Ridge Public Library here in Nebraska about they did uh, their library centennial celebration. So yeah, as I said, we are all over the place with our topics. <laughs> that's great though. Libraries is our topic. <laughs> I was say, that's the thing with libraries. We encompass like <laughs> so many things. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, all right. So um, no new comments or questions came in. So I think we will wrap things up. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Diana and Regina. Again, great to have you on. Um, I'll let you all know when the recording is ready. And hopefully we'll see maybe some of you uh, attending some of our future Encompass Lives. Perfect. Thank you for having us. Yeah, Thank you. Yes. Bye-bye, right. everybody. Bye-bye.